Good morning, traders and investors. Roger Scott here, Senior Strategist for WealthPress. Today is Tuesday. It's July 25th. And boy, oh boy, what is Wall Street not throwing our way, right? I mean, we're talking about a lot of stuff. Now, it's about 7.36. The market's not going to open up for almost two hours. Lots to talk about today. You may want to take out a piece of paper and a pen because we've got a lot. Now, a few things. Subscribe to our YouTube WealthPress channel. Join our Telegram group. Go to rogerscott.com forward slash Telegram. And I've opened up my VIP room, and I'll be in my VIP room today. I was traveling to D.C. yesterday, but I'm here and uh, I'll be live and I'll be talking about a lot of goodies. So don't miss out. The link is either above or below this video and it's at noon Eastern time today and I'm very excited about it. One more surprise for you. If you wait till the end of this video, all the way till the end of this video and you comment and post feedback, I'll give you two small cap stocks that I think are perfect for day trading today. So I'll also give you two day trading stocks in the end of the video. Now, as you can see here, the S&P is up uh, just a bit, about four or five points. The Nasdaq is up 50 points. Anything over 50 on the Nasdaq is beyond randomness. Uh, the Dow is up 28 points, which is kind of mild right now. Uh, just to give you some idea of what's happening today in terms of earnings, you've got Google, excuse me, yes, Alphabet. I, I keep saying Google, but it's Alphabet now, and Microsoft both reporting after the closing bell. Now, Wall Street is... So far, the numbers have been pretty good. They haven't been too bad. But um, as you can see here, they're looking at $1.34 .34 per share on a year-over-year. -year. That's a 10.7% increase. Microsoft is looking at 14.3% increase. Revenue is up $4.5 billion for uh, Google and uh, about 6.9% for Microsoft. We're going to be updating. It's important that you visit the VIP room today so I can give you an update to show you how those stocks are doing midday because I think we're going to have some inclination of how they're going to perform before the end of the session. In addition to Microsoft and Alphabet or Google, however you want to call it, you've got 3M, you've got Alaskan Airlines, you've got ADM, you've got Avery Dennison, you've got Biogen. I mean, what do we not have? You've got GE. Speaking of which, we, we have GE. We're long GE right now, and it's up five points before the opening bell. You're welcome. Um, yeah, that's going to be a doozy today. You've got Lamb Weston. You've got Nucor Mining. You've got Pulte Group. Wow, Pulte's reporting today. Spotify's reporting. TransUnion. I mean, uh, Visa, Verizon, everything. This is a big, big week. This week and next week are going to be big, big weeks, so you want to pay attention. That's just on the earnings front. On the Fed front, oh boy, get ready. You've got consumer confidence. That's happening at 10 today. That's a big, big report. You've got the home price index, but most importantly, FOMC begins, which means we need to start paying attention to the bond market because the bond market is what gravitates towards price. And right now it's down and it looks to me like we are, in fact, going towards the bottom. I was hesitant to say it, but this bar threw me off here, but it now looks like we're going to come back down here. It doesn't look like anything good's going to happen over the next couple of sessions with the bond market. Now, also, I want to show you something else. This is the 14 sectors. Now, this is the last month. Um, I think right now we should be looking at the last month. You could see here that the S&P has not been lagging. Let me tell you, for the last month, energy has been, lag uh, it's been leading, financial, real estate, industrial, material, then the Dow, then the S&P 500. I just want to show you how things are looking. Look at where technology is. Look at where consumer discretionary is. Look at where communication services is over the last 30 days. Right here, over the last 30 days. Last spot. So all those stocks, the discretion, the technology, the QQQs, the communication, all those stocks that have been leading are now completely lagging behind. And uh, I don't have it here, but I'll also do a weekly later on. I'll show you the weekly data as well. But uh, they're not looking all that great. Matter of fact, as you can see here, the Dow Jones, industrial, real estate, financial, energy, the blue chip stocks are clearly outperforming the market right now. The s and in the middle because the S&P has a lot of technology. Remember, all the QQQs in there and the QQQ is all the way in 14th spot. So um, not a time to be a hero. Be very, very careful in terms of how things are looking. Now, today is the biggest sector, and I'll give you the best stocks in those sectors. So energy and financial and communication services is the weakest one. That's going to be really easy to do, really, really easy to do. Let me show you how we could do that. We have our list here. We have our stocks. We know already that... Uh, we already know that real estate's one of the good ones. We know that industrial's one of the good ones, right? 
here's another one. I'd stay away from wind right now because of China uh, and Las Vegas Sands, but the homes, the home stocks are great. Leonard Home, Pulte's good. Royal Caribbean's is good. Those stocks are good. Be careful with Royal Caribbean right now, but I really like Pulte, General Electric. Um, I like, I like, what else do I like? Let's see. I love this Copart right here. We went long yesterday. Where is it? Right here. Copart, United Rental, Boeing, um, Quanta, all of these stocks we've been trading lately and uh, we've been doing quite good on them. So those are the stocks you want to go long. The stocks you want to fade right now, I, as I said, you want the tech stocks. You want the tech stock. So let me and the consumer discretionary stock. So let me show you some of the weakest stocks in that sector right now. Verizon, Match.com, technology, technology-related stocks. Those are the stocks that you want. Uh, let's see. You know what? Let me see. Let me go to the QQQ right now, and let's see what the, the weakest stocks in the QQQ are. That way we don't even have to guess. All right. Let's see here. There we go. Here's the QQQ. Let's go cumulative, and let's go backwards. Here, you could see it right here. JD. Uh, Regeneron, Amgen, these are the weakest stocks right now. Let's go to the last month and see what the weakest ones have been. AMD, there you go. Weakest stocks in a weak sector. You've got AMD right there, right there. See, look how well it did six month, three month, but look at the last month, 7% down, not well at all. ASML, uh, VeriSign, Intel, Micron, a lot of the chip stocks are taking it under the chin. So you got to be really, really careful with those companies right now. Now, I got a little bit ahead of myself. I got too excited. Let me go ahead and talk about what's on the table, which I largely did already, and then I'll give you that bonus that I talked about, right? So we're waiting for interest rate hikes from major central banks. I think that uh, it's starting today. Expect a little subdued market, not too subdued because of earnings. Uh, the Dow made a one and a quarter year high. As I just mentioned, the Dow stocks are rallying. Energy stocks are now making a three-month high. Microsoft and Google and Visa. Visa is also reporting. I forgot about Visa. Now, here's the bad part. We're now looking at 7.9 decline at the beginning of this month. At the beginning of this month, less than a month ago, we were looking at 5.7. So things are not looking as good as, the, as we thought they were in the beginning. Uh, 0.25 basis point rate hike is widely expected tomorrow. There's not even any debate on that. Consumer confidence is coming out at 10. And the manufacturing index You've got uh, China close sharply higher, snapping a six-day losing streak. They're going to do something about post-COVID economic recovery. They have to. Otherwise, they're screwed. And in Japan, they close slightly lower as investors exercise caution and locked in some profits. Everybody's looking at the central bank policy decision. Most importantly, they're looking at what Squirrely Powell is going to be talking about tomorrow. Uh, keep an eye on Datadog, Walmart. It's already up pretty good. And it got upgraded, and it's got earnings. Uh, NXPI semiconductors rose 2%, Walt Disney is down. I don't even want to talk about all the stocks that are having earnings today, but look at this. Sherwood-Williams, Moody's, um, UF, UBS, Triple M, General Motors, Nextera. I mean, it's going to be a lot and a lot of volatility. But remember, I got you guys ready for my VIP room at noon today, and you want to know what the biggest day trading stocks are? ELBM, ticker ELBM and ticker XPON. Those stocks offer the best day trading opportunities today. Yesterday I gave you AMC. That was a doozy. Today, ELBM, that's ELBM as in Mary, and XPON as in Nancy. So ELBM as in Mary, and XPON as in Nancy. Now, now, most of this year's big gains, folks, have come from what we call the Magnificent, magnificent Seven. You know those stocks. Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Meta. But there's a subset of stocks, yes, a subset of stocks that it's just blowing these mega caps out of the water right now and hardly anyone's noticing about it or doing anything about it. 300%, 400%, even 500%. We call these stocks code breakers. And right now, with the bear market off 20% off their lows, we can target the most explosive code breaker stocks for high probability trades. Folks, they move fast. Time is running out. Click the link below and learn all about it. Remember, VIP room at noon today. Subscribe to my Telegram channel and subscribe to our videos, YouTube Wealth Press channel. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. Bye. I'll see you in the VIP room at noon today. And remember, ELBM and XPON. Bye.